In April 1951, President Harry S. Truman relieved General of the Army Douglas MacArthur from his commands in Japan and Korea. For the first time since 1937, MacArthur and his family returned to the United States to the acclaim of the American people. He delivered his famous Old Soldiers Never Die speech before a joint session of Congress. I now close my military career and just fade away. An old soldier who tried to do his duty as God gave him the light to see that duty. Goodbye. Cities across the nation honored the general with parades and invitations to speak. Then, in November 1951, he visited Norfolk, Virginia. Unlike other American cities, Norfolk had asked the general to come honor his mother, Norfolk native Mary Pinckney Hardy MacArthur. On 18 November 1951, MacArthur and the city leaders dedicated Mary Pinckney Hardy MacArthur Park on the site of the old Hardy home in the Berkeley section of Norfolk. He said on his visit, I feel like I've finally come home. It was a sentiment that Norfolk Mayor Fred Duckworth never forgot. In 1960, along with Norfolk City Councilman and future Mayor Roy Martin, Duckworth presented the General with the idea of creating a repository and museum in Norfolk for all his collections. MacArthur had offers from cities across the United States to take care of his collections, but he felt his connection with Norfolk was strong the birthplace of his mother, Norfolk was also where she had married the general's father, Arthur MacArthur Jr., in 1875. His oldest brother, Arthur III, was born at the old family homestead of a river edge on the banks of the Elizabeth River, the site of today's Mary Pinckney Hardy MacArthur Park. Another brother, Malcolm, who died at age four, is buried in Norfolk's Cedar Grove Cemetery. What made the proposal unique was that Norfolk offered its old City Hall building as the site for MacArthur's museum. Built in 1850, the City Hall was a central part of Norfolk's history. In the American Civil War, the city of Norfolk was surrendered to Union forces on its front steps. In 1917, it became the city courthouse, but in 1960, it was vacated as a new courthouse was built on St. Paul's Boulevard. MacArthur knew it was a special offer, and in truth, there is no other place like it for an American general or admiral. He accepted Norfolk's proposal, but on one condition. He and his wife Jean wanted to be buried beneath the rotunda of the old city hall. The museum thus became a memorial. Funds were raised for construction, the interior of the building was gutted, and Memorial Day 1964 was chosen as the date for the memorial's official opening. Douglas MacArthur said he would be in Norfolk, alive or dead, for the memorial's date of dedication. A month before the date, however, the general passed away at age 84. The eyes of the world turned to Norfolk for the funeral of the great general. His body arrived in Norfolk on April 9, 1964. He lay in state beneath the rotunda, and over 10,000 people waited in line to view his body and pay their final respects. Dignitaries from around the world converged on Norfolk for Douglas MacArthur's interment. His funeral was the official opening of the MacArthur Memorial. Originally consisting of just the old city hall building, the memorial has grown with the city around it. Buildings have been built, raised, and built again to meet the needs of the community, the region, and the world. Today, it encompasses the entire MacArthur Square in the heart of downtown Norfolk. Since its creation in 1964, the MacArthur Memorial has always served as a tourist destination for the city of Norfolk. In 1967, the memorial saw its one millionth visitor, its two millionth visitor in 1973, its three millionth visitor in 1983, and its four millionth visitor in 1998. Hundreds of reunions, celebrations, commemorations, and historical presentations have taken place at the MacArthur Memorial. And over the past 50 years, the memorial has also evolved into a premier historical center dedicated to the preservation and presentation of the history of World War I, World War II, the occupation of Japan, and the Korean War. 
Today, the MacArthur Memorial is recognized as an international center of education and scholarship. The memorial's archives hold millions of documents, photographs, films, newspapers, and is a mecca for students around the world. Over 4,000 research requests are handled by the archives every year. Most importantly, the archival and curatorial collections serve as the basis for its education program that reaches hundreds of thousands of people each year. In his final speech, the one he wrote for the memorial's dedication in May 1964, a speech which he never delivered, General MacArthur said that the memorial's goal was to preserve the memory of the past while always keeping an eye on the future. For 50 years, the city of Norfolk's memorial to the general has dedicated itself to preserving the history and memory of the millions of veterans that served the nation. Now, in 2014, the MacArthur Memorial predominantly serves a public that was born long after the General's death. Norfolk and the MacArthur Memorial will continue to evolve, but its mission to perpetuate the General's ideals of duty, honor, country will endure.